Welcome to part two of Kinetics Review. This review material will focus on deducing first order rate law given concentration time data. Before we begin, it is worth mentioning that the student should have first viewed part one to better comprehend this and subsequent sections. In this introductory video for first order kinetics, we'll examine reactions with only one reactant. Otherwise, pseudo order techniques need to be introduced and they will not be discussed here. A rate implies a ratio. The ratio for a chemical reaction is either a loss of reactant per time or the formation of a product per time. The loss of reactant per time can be equated to the first order rate law, where n equals 1. The change of A over the change of T is the average rate of reaction, but we want to examine the instantaneous rate of reaction. So we introduce dA over dT. Now we have a differential equation we can solve with a little calculus and produce a function, which will be the concentration as a function of time. Before integration, we group similar terms, introduce our integral, which is from initial concentration to concentration at some time t, and time from zero to some time t, pull our constant out of the integral, and after integration, we get an integrated first order rate law which can be rearranged to get two very useful forms of the integrated rate law. Equation 8 is very useful. Looking closer, we see it is a linear equation, y equals mx plus b, where a plot of time on the x-axis versus natural log of the concentration of A on the y-axis will give a straight line. So let's examine time concentration data for the decomposition of N2O5. If we take the natural log of the concentrations and plot natural log of the concentrations versus time, we should generate a straight line if the reaction follows first order kinetics. So how would we see this data in the word problem and what would be asked of us? Well, you could be asked to simply prove this reaction as first order and if so, what is the rate constant? If it is first order, it will follow the linearized form of the integrated first order rate law, where a plot of the natural log of N2O5 concentrations versus time will be a straight line. Conversely, if a straight line is not obtained, one would have proven it is not first order. So the first step would be to take the natural log of the concentrations and plot natural log of N2O5 concentrations versus time as shown. Clearly, this is a first-order kinetics reaction due to the straight line we observe. But it takes a lot of work converting all of the concentration data and then entering all of it into a graphing calculator. However, one could simply calculate the slope of the first two and the last two data points, and if they are equal, then one has proven the data is a straight line, which is much quicker. Converting the concentration data points in red and calculating their slopes, we see that they are equal. Thus, we have proven this reaction follows first order kinetics. Calculating the slope using the first and last data points affords the rate constant as shown. Note that the negative of the slope affords a positive rate constant. Another type of question that could be asked is, what will the concentration be at some time t? Well, in this example, we already know the reaction is first order and therefore will follow the first order linearized equation. And we have already demonstrated that the plot of natural log of N2O5 concentrations versus time will produce a straight line with the negative of the slope equal to the rate constant. Thus, we can use this straight line to extrapolate out to 600 seconds to determine the concentration of N2O5. Plugging the rate constant, as well as time at 600 seconds, and initial concentration will yield the concentration of N2O5 at 600 seconds. The power of a straight line function is clearly demonstrated within this problem. In other words, if the initial concentration and rate constant are known, the concentration of reactant can be calculated at any time t. Another type of question that could be asked once the reaction has been determined to be first order is, well, what is the half-life for this reaction? The half-life is defined as the amount of time for half of the reactant to be gone 
or to have reacted. So starting from the integrated rate law, we can rearrange our terms to a Ford equation two. Then making some substitutions, T one half for T, and understanding that the concentration of A at the half-life will be half the initial concentration of A yields equation three, which can be simplified and rearranged to yield our half-life equation. Therefore, if the rate constant is known, the half-life is easily calculated and vice versa. Again, in the wording of this problem, we are told the reaction is first order. Thus, we can obtain the slope by plotting natural log of A versus time and examine the first and last data points to calculate the rate constant, which we have already demonstrated in a previous example problem. So now, starting with the first order half-life equation and substituting in the rate constant, we obtain the half-life for this reaction, which means that every 100 seconds, half of the reactant will be gone. Another type of question that the student should be prepared to answer is, how much time needs to pass for a reaction to be a certain percent complete? Using the same data found in previous questions, we know the reaction to follow first order kinetics. If the order is unknown, then we have developed skills to deduce if the reaction is first order, which is to prove if the natural log of N2O5 concentration versus time is a straight line or not. So we need the rate constant again, which we've previously calculated. Now if the reaction is 82% complete, then 18% remains. Let's assume the initial concentration is 1. Then the concentration of A when the reaction is 82% complete will be 0.18. Thus the ratio of A0 to A when 82% complete can be substituted into the rearranged form of the integrated rate law that was previously derived. Substituting in for the rate constant allows for the calculation of time when the reaction is 82% complete. Alternatively, the linearized integrated rate law could also be used to calculate the time for the reaction to be 82% complete, as shown. Either way, the same answer is obtained. In the next example, we will tackle half-life concepts within radioactive decay processes which always follow first order kinetics. In this example, we are deducing how much time will pass for the radioactive decay of the magnesium-27 isotope to be 89% complete. Well, using the rearranged or linearized first order integrated rate law, we can deduce our relative concentrations of 1 and 0.11 remaining, which can be placed into initial concentration and the concentration at some time t when the reaction is 89% complete. However, we need the rate constant to proceed, which can be deduced because the half-life was given within the exercise. After rearrangement, the rate constant is easily deduced and substituted within either integrated first-order rate law, which affords the time for this radioactive decay of the magnesium-27 isotope to be 89% complete. Let's try to incorporate all principles within this decay reaction, which is thought to be first order kinetics. First, we will take the concentration time data and create a new column for the natural log of concentration, which will be employed to graph natural log of A versus time. Clearly, this straight line graph proves first order kinetics. However, a much quicker method we learned was to calculate the slopes of the first two and last two data points to see if they were equal and they are close enough to be considered equal here. Thus, we have again proven the reaction follows first order kinetics. To deduce the rate constant, we can use the first and last data points to calculate the slope. The negative of the slope affords the rate constant. With the rate constant in hand, the half-life is easily calculated as shown, which means the concentration of reactant is halved every 64.8 minutes. To calculate the concentration of reactant remaining after 180 minutes, we need to substitute time, the initial concentration, and the rate constant into the integrated first order equation to solve for the concentration as shown. With a little arithmetic manipulation, the concentration of reactant remaining at 180 minutes is easily obtained. 
In summary, for first order reactions, we limited our discussion to only one reactant. We were able to derive with a little calculus a function, which is the concentration as a function of time, or the integrated rate law shown here that is a straight line. We also derived the half-life equation for first order kinetics. And the plot of natural log of A versus time gave a straight line with a slope that allowed us to deduce a rate constant. Then we examined different types of questions that could be asked of the student. For example, given concentration time data, prove the reaction follows first order kinetics. Recognizing that the first order integrated rate law is a straight line, if we plot ln of A versus time, we data massage the concentration column to natural log of the concentration. If the subsequent plot of LNA versus T is a straight line, then first order kinetics for the reaction is observed. Alternatively, and more rapidly, we could examine the first two and last two data points to see if their slopes matched. If they had the same slope, which is the definition of a straight line, then again, first order kinetics is observed or proven. Conversely, the same technique can be used to disprove first order kinetics. For example, the concentration time data was collected for the dimerization of 1,3-butadiene. The concentration column is data massaged to natural log of concentration, and a plot of natural log of A versus T was generated. Clearly, the plot is not a straight line. Thus, we have proven that this dimerization reaction does not follow first-order kinetics. Alternatively, we could have examined the first two and last two data points to see if their slopes matched, which they do not. Another important skill is to deduce the rate constant, which is simply the negative of the slope for a first-order reaction. The rate constant is often needed for subsequent types of questions. Another skill is to deduce concentration of reactant at some time t. Using the linearized integrated first order equation, we realize we need the rate constant, the time, and the initial concentration to solve for the concentration of A at some time t. When all of these values are known, the concentration can be deduced at any time t with a little algebra. A student could also be asked for the half-life the amount of time required to pass for the reactant concentration to be halved. After substituting the rate constant into the previously derived first order half-life equation, the half-life is easily obtained. Interestingly, each subsequent half-life is equal because there is no concentration dependency. In other words, concentration does not appear in the first order half-life equation, which is quite different than in upcoming second and zero order half-life equations. Another common question is, how much time needs to pass for the reaction to be X percent complete? The key here is to recognize that if the reaction is X percent complete, then 100 minus X percent remains. For example, if the reaction is 89 percent complete, then 11 percent remains. Assuming an initial concentration of 1, then 0.11 remains. Using these values within a form of the integrated rate law with the rate constant will yield the time required to pass for the reaction to be 89% complete.